Good morning, Redeemer Church family. I pray that your Thursday is off to a good start. Today, we will look at one verse in 1 Peter chapter 1, that is verse 22. And then, Lord willing, tomorrow, we will finish chapter 1 of 1 Peter. And the last few weeks, almost three weeks now, of going through chapter 1 of 1 Peter, the Lord has used that to help me to focus on Jesus. It's been encouraging. It's some days been really challenging uh, to to grapple with and try to get my mind wrapped around the, the truths that we see in 1 Peter chapter 1. I pray that for you it's been encouraging and, and some days challenging as well. Today with verse 22, I'm, I've combined um, two English translations, so some from the ESV, some from the NIV. I've put both of those translations in the WhatsApp notes, so that's why there's ESV, NIV in the WhatsApp notes. Um, so let's let's read it. Verse 22, having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. We see here that Peter makes a connection between obedience and purification. And he's clearly saying to us, there's a relationship between those two. So let's explore what that relationship is. I'm not a grammar expert really in any language, especially not in New Testament Greek, but this is a case where Greek grammar really helps us to understand what Peter is saying. Peter uses the perfect active participle form of the verb to purify, and that teaches us something. It communicates something that he was very intentional in, in the way that he um, formed that verb. And so let's see what he's trying to teach us. We see that it means that our purification was a past event that has ongoing effect. So perfect participle, that's what it does, is it's a past event that has ongoing to this time effect. Think of it like this. When you obey the truth of the gospel, your initial obedience was to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, to turn from sin to Christ and trust in Jesus for the salvation of your soul. The effect then was that a sincere love was born within you for Jesus, but also for the family of God, so brothers and sisters in Christ. The ongoing effect then is that the Spirit of God continues day after day to multiply within you, to give you grace, to grow in your love for both God and for the church, your brothers and sisters in Christ. So, you were saved, you believed, a love was born within you on that day, and then to this day, the ongoing effect is an ever-growing increase in your love for God and for brothers and sisters in Christ. What an encouragement it must have been for those first readers of Peter's letter who were going through a really difficult time of persecution to just be reminded that you have brothers and sisters in Christ who love you, who support you, they care for you, and you likewise are loving and caring for them. Don't you find that it's true that it's easier to go through hard times when you know that people love you, when you know that people care for you? To be truly known and at the same time truly loved, is it's a sweet thing. To be truly known as God knows you. He knows every single part of you, every thought, every desire that you have. And let's be honest, we wouldn't always want to broadcast those things to people around us. Yet God, he knows those things and yet he truly loves you. And my prayer is then that within the church, especially within our Redeemer family, my prayer is that there's an increasing measure of being known and being loved in this church. And that for you, there's an increasing measure of you knowing other brothers and sisters in the Redeemer family and growing in your love for them. Let's pray to that end. Father, thank you that when we were redeemed, on the day that we turned to Christ and put our faith in him, thank you that you just planted within us this love 
for you and for your family. And God, thank you that your spirit daily does a work to increase that love within us. I pray, Father, that we would not quench that spirit. There are certainly people in our lives that sometimes we find it hard to love them. Help us to see them, God, as you see them. Convict, convict our hearts, Father, when we don't love them well. We don't want to quench the work of your spirit in our lives that's trying to increase in us a love for both you and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. May today it be true for each one of us that we grow in our love for one another. I pray this